Thank you, thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I join President Truman in saluting our Latin American neighbors by saying, La Sarayador, que me dirigiado, que sobe lo pide, la que está leído, y la que da por qué. Translation, do you need money? <laughs> no cosigners, no delay. Just ask Harry and take it away. <laughs> Well, I'm amazed. Do you know Spanish? Uh, do I know Spanish? Yeah. A little bit. I know just about enough Spanish to understand Xavier Cougat when he's speaking English. <laughs> Why, Mr. Gallup, uh, do, you, uh, do you speak Spanish? Why, certainly. Do you speak fluently? Uh, no, just Spanish. <laughs> oh, my word, that was a jolly one, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was jazzy. <laughs> That, that was a that was a picherino with a goody goody gumdrop on top. No, I'm I'm serious, Mr. Gallup. Do, do you really understand Spanish? Well, I mean, do you know uh, hasta mañana, uh, hasta la vista? No, but I do know hasta la vant. Mr. Gallup. Oh my word! I did it again. Yes, did I. <laughs> well, I do declare, with a little encouragement, I could be another Hildegard. <laughs> Mr. Gallup, will you please watch yourself? You're going to strain that one corpuscle you have left. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Gallup, really, what's got into you? Oh, I guess I am a bit overstimulated, Burl. The high jinx of the Legion Convention, you know. Well, Mr. Gallup, you belong to the American Legion? Do I belong? Yeah. I am assistant to Commander Deems Taylor of the Shostakovich Post, number six. There is a Shostakovich post? For the music lovers. Oh, I see. <laughs> we were the cut-ups of the convention. You are, Harry. Well, well, what did you do? Oh, it was just too utterly mad. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Come on. No, uh, I, we have a nice audience. They yes, like to know. Tell us, what did you do? Well, first, we all got high on root beer float. <laughs> yes. Then we all gathered on the roof of Carnegie Hall and pelted the people below with mandolin picks. You didn't. <laughs> we did. <laughs> you demons, you. <laughs> you, 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 you. You were insane. Oh, if only it had ended there, but it wound up in a brawl. A brawl? Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, we broke up a Phil Spitali rehearsal and chased the girls up 8th Avenue. <laughs> you can't. We suffered for it. Did you? One of our members, a Mr. C.C. Gribble of South Bend, was badly scratched. He caught one of the girls? He caught Phil Spitalny. <laughs> he has sharp nails, too. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Gallup, what is happening to the dignity of the music world? It's terrible, isn't it? I'm, I'm just saying it. <laughs> yes. you, you, you and your, your Shostakovich is running wild, that's bad enough. But coming so soon after the Tommy Dorsey-Benny Goodman fight, that's terrible. Margaret Truman may have to carry on all alone now. <laughs> but simmer down. Simmer down, Mr. Gallup. Simmer down. Don't worry. We're going to present our salute to our friends below the border. Exotic South America. South America. Pearl of the Southern Hemisphere. Shining jewel of the tropics. Home of coffee heads. <laughs> South America, mountain paradise Founded on the west by the Andes And on the east by the Amoses <laughs> That's a team, you know <laughs> Used to be pick and pat This is a strange Formerly molasses in January This is a strange A strange land, South America A land of contrast Go a few miles inland And you are lost in a trackless steaming jungle Where all you hear is Yet, yet only a few miles from this wilderness stands the modern city of Rio de Janeiro, where every night in the smart, lavish setting of its famous Copacabana nightclub, you can hear... I guess they get the same crowd. Let us go on and on. South America. Come with us, dear listener. Come with us for a voyage up the mysterious Amazon River. We bought our gleaming white craft, the good ship Kukalugumba. <laughs> she points her proud nose up the river, and we're off 
with the roar of a mighty engine. we glide up the mighty Amazon, away from civilization. Here the banks of the river are overgrown with lush tropical vegetation and an occasional Burma shave sign. <laughs> from a bamboo hut, a friendly native appears. Yahoo! We call to him. <laughs> he answers. <laughs> but our dirty, sh our sturdy ship... <laughs> Our sturdy ship never falters as her mighty engines press onward. <laughs> Suddenly, around a bend, we come upon a village of Amazon women. These Amazon women are as big as men and as strong as men. Wait! There is an Amazon woman waving to us from the shore. We call to her. Hello, miss! And she answers, what do you say, bud? <laughs> and as she waves her husband at us in farewell, <laughs> we surge forward onto the, into the, onto the yinde. <laughs> into the unknown. <laughs> that whole line was unknown to me, I <laughs> Trusting in the power of our mighty engine. At last, at last our goal, the headwaters of the Amazon, the lost world. Here no human foot has ever trod. Here nothing lives. Here, wait, someone is peering out of one of the bushes. Wait, can it be a human? Hello there. Hello. Who are you? What? Who are you? I'm a bookie. Is it safe to come back to New York? <laughs> Yes, as we point with our pride, proud noses. I gotta go to school, no good. As we point with our proud noses toward home, we say farewell, South America. Farewell, gem of the new world. And South America answers. Thank you, Guy Lombardo, for the use of your boat. <laughs> and thank you, Carmen, for playing the part of the boat. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's with great pleasure to present our distinguished guest. He is the hero of millions of South Americans, one of the world's foremost bullfighters, none other than Emilio Gonzalez Gomez. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Emilio. <laughs> Buenas noches, ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience. <laughs> senor, Senor Gomez, at the climax of a bullfight, as you, the Toreador, facing the charging bull, what is the essential thing to do? Thrust and lunge. Uh, thrust and lunge? I see. What uh -huh. comes after the lunge? Dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my little joke. That's your little joke. Uh -huh. We'll mop it up later. Tell us, uh, <laughs> tell us, Emilio, I understand there is a strict procedure in becoming a bullfighter. Oh, very strict. There is? Yeah, a bullfighter has to kill 50 bulls before he earns the title of El Senor Toreador. El Senor Toreador? And what does he call before this? El Junior Toreador. <laughs> That's only logical, isn't it? Oh, yes, logical, sure. Logical. <laughs> The ceremonies at a bullfight are very, very impressive. Uh, could you list the men who take part? Oh, gladly. What? Gladly. Oh, gladly, yeah. <laughs> he ran forth today. I know him. Gladly. Collect. What? Collect. No, I'm willing. <laughs> we know I'm willing tonight. No, I'm willing. Yeah. All right. Well, there are the Toreadors. Yes. The Matadors. Yes. The Picadors. Yes. And also the men on horses who keep training around and wound and get the bull dizzy. I see. What are they called? Revolving doors. 
<laughs> they call me the Fred Allen of Barcelona. <laughs> you look more like Portland of the cement company. Senor. <laughs> What is your greatest thrill in the bullfight? Well, it's right after I kill the bull. I see. With a grand flourish, I cut off the bull's left ear. You do that because it's the custom? I do that because I'm hungry. <laughs> well, that's murder, senor. I understand you are the only bullfighter who has ever won the right to the title of El Estor Mago Cabillo. That's correct. El Estor Mago Cabillo. Tell us about the fight that won you this title. Well, it was two years ago in Granada. In Granada, yep. Yeah. The bull came rushing at me. Closer and closer he came. It was at that moment that I earned the title of El Estamaga Cabillo. Cabillo it is. You yep. see, and uh, what... Uh... <laughs> I'll never get my diploma. And tell me, uh, that's how you earned that title. That's why. Right. What did you do? I ran away. You ran away? What does the title uh, El Estamaga uh, Cabillo mean? Yellow belly. Oh, yellow <laughs> Thank you, Emilio. You are there, magnifico. Oh, Burrow. I'm sorry, Mr. Gallagher. I, I keep taking your line. Watch that. I have very few as it is. <laughs> Burrow, tonight you portray that daring bad man from below the Rio Grande, Pancho Burl. I'm Mexican tonight. Hmm? I'm Pancho? Oh, that's good. You come galloping up to your bandit gang. Whoa, chababa, chababa. <laughs> Men, caballeros, tonight we ride. Olay. <laughs> Tonight we sneak across the border to United States. We rob banks, rustle maybe cattle, play a little pinball machine, see Patrillo. Then maybe... <laughs> then maybe we go to Hollywood, get a few days' work at Republic Studios. Olay. <laughs> Wait, stop. The whole deal is off. Pancho, just remember, has big job, must do all alone. What is job, boss? What is job, boss? <laughs> Job, Don't be so nosy. Pancho must go put Johnny on the spot. Tell me, Johnny. Tell me pronto. Savvy? Why is it what you call him Philip Morris? So much better to smoke. Here's your answer, Cisco kid. Cisco kid? It's because the Philip Morris smoker really gets what other smokers only hope to get. Right, Johnny. Philip Morris is the one leading cigarette with an exclusive difference in manufacture. The only leading cigarette scientifically proved far less irritating to the nose and throat. Remember, less irritation means more enjoyment. That's why the Philip Morris smoker really gets what other smokers only hope to get. Better taste, finer flavor, perfect smoking pleasure. Very good. But you tell me this, you big thin gringo with nose like enchilada. <laughs> tell me, doesn't every smoker know that... No. I thought they did. If, <laughs> if every smoker knew what Philip Morris smokers know, they'd all change to Philip Morris, America's finest cigarette. For perfect smoking pleasure, try a pack of Philip Morris today. <laughs> Block and the Philip Morris Orchestra trying to play Tico Tico. Tico Tico, that's one of the Marx Brothers, the one with the two heads. And now... The <laughs> one with the two heads? Oh, no. And, uh, and now, as part of our salute to our good neighbors, we now present... South American Forum tonight. South American Forum tonight. The question, is a rainy night in Rio any more fun than any night in the balcony of the Roxy? Thank you, Mr. Gallup. Now, let's have questions from the floor. Let's start with this gentleman here in the white Palm Beach suit and the leaky fountain pen. Uh, yes, young man? Uh, Mr. Burrow, on behalf of the State Department, may I congratulate you on the wonderful work your program has done in making the people of South America so grateful to us. My program makes the people of South America grateful? Why? They don't hear it down there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Next, this young man with the typewriter ribbon holding up his pants. Young man, uh, what is your name? My name is Cucaracha. <laughs> Cucaracha, that's your real name? Of course not, Cucaracha. Who would have a name like that? 
<laughs> well, you're right. I took the name when I come to this country. I see. What was your name before? Cockroach. <laughs> I understand. Well, tell us, Mr. C. Have you, um, have you a question about South America? Oh, I don't want to talk about South America before I live here, don't I? Yeah, but I'll How about talking about the good old USA? Well, I'd like... I like this country. I don't care what you I say. I didn't say that. This is my country, right or wrong. I know it's your... The good old USA, that means nothing to you, huh? Oh, sure it means oh, something. Oh, sure. To me, it's drinking pop and rooting for the Dodgers. Coming home from Coney in a wet bathing suit. Look, young man. Watching that old Chevy on Sunday morning. Listening to Gabriel Heater. Please, Why don't you go back where you came from, you bum? Please don't. Now, please, let not, let's not use, lose our heads. Well, make up your mind, will you? Young... Young man... I know where my place is. You don't have to point to it. We will run into date with Judy by the time. We're now, if you have a question, young man, let's have it. Okay. Would you scratch my back? Please, let's stick to the subject of South America. How about a question from the ladies? All right, you, madam, holding the cigarette lighter and singeing a duck. What is your name? Tallulah Feeney, I'm a homemaker. I see, and you have a question? Yeah, when is South America going to stop with them dances already? If I got to shake one more thing, it'll come loose. <laughs> you do South American dances? My husband, Brentwood. He's on a Latin kick. All day long, he's doing the conga, the samba, the rumba, and slamba. The slamba? That's a new one for getting out of the subway. <laughs> your husband's always dancing? The way he swings them big hips of his. When he walks down the street, people look up to see if Sabu is riding him. He has big hips. Big. Before he can get into the bath, I gotta butter the sides of the tub. <laughs> he loves South American dances, eh? Murder. Yesterday, he come home with a new one. The Mexican hat dance. He done it in front of the house and got arrested. He got arrested just for doing the Mexican hat dance? Yeah, he thought that's all he had to wear. <laughs> In other words, Mrs. Feeney, your problem is South American dances. The problem's taken care of now that President Truman's down there. You mean while President Truman is down there, they won't dance? Are you kidding? You try and do a conga to the Missouri wall. Thank you very much, Mrs. Feeney. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, since uh, Mrs. Feeney has brought up the subject of our president's trip to Brazil, let us be the first to welcome him home as we all join in and sing. <laughs> When Harry comes sailing home again. Hooray. Hooray. When Harry comes sailing home again. Hooray. Hooray. Life will be peaches and cream again. The Republicans will scream again. And we'll all shout. Yay. When Harry comes sailing home. By the way, Burl, yeah. did you hear President Truman and all the big officials addressing the Rio conference this morning? I... I I tried to, Mr. Gallup, but there was no use. Did you ever try to listen to a program on the radio with your whole family around? Uh, Gesundheit. I was, uh... <laughs> That's Horace Heights' sister. I, uh... I was home. Uh, I tried to listen to a program. No kidding. I, I was home this morning, all set to hear the speeches from the Rio conference, and I was sitting in my living room... <laughs> Milton, this is Tuesday, the day of your program. What are you doing home? Yeah, Pop. Ain't you got a rehearsal to get the egg ready for the air? Quiet. <laughs> Junior, I moved the rehearsal time up so I can listen to the speeches from Rio. Just let me sit here and listen to the radio. You want your pencil and paper, Pop, or won't there be any jokes you can steal? <laughs> Very funny. That's a nice thing, Junior, to talk about your father stealing jokes. Well, what else should I talk about? Your 12 toes? <laughs> Brother, can I please have quiet? I'm staying home just to hear a program. A program I can appreciate and understand. It's too early for it pays to be ignorant. <laughs> Make fun of your father, will you? Milton, you struck Junior on the head. And on the numb side, too. <laughs> yeah! Dear, will you take him away? Hold his head in the oven or something. I want to... I, I want to hear the speeches. Just before the president talks, there's an important address by Senator Vanden Clyde. It's called the Six Points of the Good Neighbor Policy. What's with the points? Just let them send us another Carmen Miranda. Junior, go up to your room. My room. It still says Rover over the door. 
please. The senator goes on right away. Now, remember, dear, I want absolute quiet. Those six points are important to every American. I'm turning on the radio. You listen, dear. I'll go on with my housework. This is NBC at the Rio Conference. We now present Senator Vanden Clyde in his keynote address, The Six Points of the Good Neighbor Policy. Senator Vanden Clyde. Shh, shh, shh. My friends, the six points I'm about to present should be carefully heard and indelibly written into the minds of every American. <laughs> First point number one. Milton, lift your feet. Oh, no, darling, not the vacuum cleaner. Point number one. In the event... I'm waiting to hear Truman and you come up with a Hoover. <laughs> Quiet, and the darling, let's listen. And so much for point number one. <laughs> it was interesting, wasn't it? Well, there, there are five more points. And now for point two. Oh, good. Point two is as follows. Who's at the door, Milton? Oh, no. I'll turn off the radio. Who's at the door? I'll get rid of them. Hiya, Milty. <laughs> Hello, Sam. Hello, Martha. Uh, darling, it's Sam and Martha Harrison. Uh, look, Sam, I'm listening we to... We were just going by and saw your car parked outside. So I said, how come Milton's home? Hasn't he got rehearsals on Tuesday? Let's go in and see if he's still sick. That's what I said, isn't it, Martha? Yes. <laughs> look, Sam, there's an important speech that I'm... Milty, I got a joke for you. You can clean it up for the air. But Senator Vanden Clyde... Is... <laughs> Get this. Oh. They screamed at it down the Oak Stag party last night, didn't they, Martha? Yes. <laughs> what was she doing at a stag? Sam, the senator. <laughs> Sam, the senator. Two old maids register in a hotel, Sam, see? the senator. The billboard brings their bags up to a room. Sam, the senator. The first old maid says, boy, here's a dime, and then... Wait, uh, say, Martha. Yes? Uh, was it the first old maid who said that? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Then the first old maid says... Sam, please, I know the joke. The punchline is when the second old maid says, Why do you think we threw out the key? <laughs> why do you think we... <laughs> why do you think we... Th is that the same joke I had, Martha? Yes. <laughs> Sam, I'm listening to an important speech. Okay, okay, nice seeing you, Milton. Wasn't it, Martha? Yes. Nice to you. Goodbye. Quick, turn on the radio. And that's point number two in a nutshell. <laughs> a nutshell? Well, I didn't miss much. Just a little nutshell. <laughs> oh, brother. And now, point number three. Point three. Point number three is simply the idea. That rabbit, turn already... it off. What was that noise? I know what it is. Junior's using my electric razor again. Where's the bathroom? Come out, Junior. Junior, come out. Okay, okay, you got me. Sure. Junior, if I ever catch you using that electric razor... Well, how would you like it as a kid to school call you, Junior the Fuzz? Quiet. <laughs> Here, turn the radio on. And that is all there is to point number three. Simple, isn't it? Very. <laughs> now, quiet, everybody. Please. Point number four. The point doorbell. Four. The doorbell, I know. Hiya, Milty. Oh, it's you, Sam the Senator. I mean, Sam the Senator. The minute we left your door, I said, here we were at the Burles, and we didn't even say hello or goodbye to Milty's wife. Why, she must think we're barbarians. That's what I said, isn't it, Martha? Yes. <laughs> Sam, the senator. Lucky we came back. I got a joke for you that I know is him. I, I don't want to hear any more jokes. I just want to hear Senator Vanden Clyde. Do you understand? Now, now, get out. Let me listen. Beat it. Well, I must say, this is the worst insult I've ever suffered in my life. Yes. <laughs> you stay out of this, loudmouth. <laughs> you understand? Yes. <laughs> Goodbye. The radio, Senator. So you see how important point number four is. Yes, I do, I do. Yes. Now let us take up point number five. Oh, what's the use, Senator? You'll start talking, something will happen, I'll miss the whole point again. Right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, this is too much, oh. <laughs>